Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, and I am the eternal spirit of the phrase Aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you just want to go apeshit? Because it's time for the very first episode, very first bonus episode, sorry, of my Dishonored Let's Play. You would not believe how much trouble I've had recording this episode. This is about my seventh attempt, because apparently everything in my life is collapsing right now, but hey, I'm here, it's fine, let's go. So, um, rules-wise it's pretty much the same as the main playthrough, except that uh, I'll be playing a lot faster, I won't be stopping to talk so much and ramble about things, I'm just going to uh, blitz through and experiment with the combat. It will be pretty much the same, I'll be trying to avoid detection, but uh, occasionally get into a few thrilling sword fights. I'm basically just going to be, um, yeah, just playing through but on high chaos. I'm going to try and trim down every one of these bonus episodes to an entire chapter in one episode. Uh, I was originally actually going to include the intro, but there's not really any meaningfully chaotic decisions you can make about the only dipshit thing you can do um, in the intro section of the game is refuse to play hide and seek with Emily. And, you know, not indulging the whims of a child is, is, is terrible, but not exactly the same thing as murdering 16 people. So yeah, I'm going to be starting from chapter one directly, and that's everything we need to know, I think, so let's dive in. So, uh, the first thought I really have is that um, the incredibly murdery version of Corvo you get in High Chaos, I can't help but imagine him standing here in his cell after six months thinking, oh, you guys fucked up, you fucked up so bad. You do realise that the only thing stopping me from becoming a kind of absurd serial killer and just tearing my way through the upper echelons of this city was the fact that I knew Jessamine would not like it. I hated that guy. You're gonna really enjoy it in a second when I come back and murder him. See the noble Lord Protector get his head chopped off. They're as bad as us, betting on So I could just kick the shit out of these guys immediately, but if I wait for them to both to turn around, I can kill them silently, which is to my advantage because there's a guy up on that walkway who will hear the commotion. Unless accompanied by an officer of the walk. Which is why escort through the solitary wing must be. I'm gonna try and be a bit quieter. With one week's notice. And the reason why I don't want to uh, alert the guy on the walkway, you will see in just a moment, there's a very interesting mechanic that a lot of people don't know about. I actually didn't know that you could do this um, until several years after I'd played the game. Um, and you know, this is one of my favourite games. I played this game exhaustively when it came out, and I've gone back to it every couple years ever since, just like I do with all my favourite games. You can uh, kick people off ledges. That's the only way you can knock people off ledges from this game, really. The sequel adds a couple methods where you can shove people or knock them around. Um, but yeah, if you skid into someone, the skid ability is something I knew about. Um, and they are standing on a ledge, they get knocked over. If you skid into them generally, it just knocks them back a little bit. Which, much like any thrown object being thrown at someone, will uh, stun them momentarily, which lets you get a uh, insta-kill Stab animation in. What was that? Two arms. Bye. Uh, the other fun thing about that particular aspect of the game is that they actually die um, once they reach a certain point of falling over the edge. It doesn't have anything to do with them uh, actually hitting the ground. They die long before that. So if you bump someone like that and they don't quite go off the edge, they sort of like flop lifelessly onto the balustrade and uh, and stay there forever. Um, if uh, Like we saw, if you fail to completely knock them over the edge and they bounce back into where you are, they will get back up again and fight you. But uh, And if you knock them all the way off, they fall down and scream, which is very loud and noisy. So this is a little trick that uh, is very useful. If you throw a bottle into someone, it will stagger them. If someone hears a bottle smash, they will get uh, concerned by what caused the smashing bottle and go look to see what it is. That means that you can throw a bottle at that guy before he sees you, and then he will stop walking into the yard, which means that you can just fight this What's guy by himself. Someone help me out. Huh. This'll come in handy. Um, we can use it to get ahead of our opponents. So it's always good to just tidy up as you go as well. That was flimsy. 
think there's some coins. Yep, there's a few over here. So, yeah, what the hell was I saying? Um, yep, you can use that skidding to knock people off, or you can do all sorts of other things. As I said, any thrown object will perfectly uh, stun someone, which gives you the... It does give you a moment to kill them before they get close enough to you to be a problem. Um, or if they're already fighting you, they uh, will be staggered by the hit, and any time an opponent is staggered for any reason, then you can do the one-hit insta-kill on them. So the real trick with, uh, with that is picking up bottles and bits of people and so on in the middle of a fight to throw at other people to stun them. You can do a similar trick by uh, shooting someone in the leg with your crossbow, which will stun them momentarily as they fall over, clutching their knee. Um, I was going to make a uh, arrow in the knee joke, but that's from a different game and ten years ago. Is he just going to stand there? I think he is. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. So I have a fun idea for what to do with these guys. Because part of the joy of playing High Chaos, or, you know, playing violently in any game like this, is bullying the NPCs and elaborate, coming up with elaborate ways to wipe them out and so on. I think this is a natural impulse in players of games, or even in people generally. It's fun to bully things. It hurts to bully people in real life because you're hurting real people, but uh, NPCs aren't real people. This is why people, you know, they torture their sims in The Sims, or they uh, play Skyrim and then they... Um, you know, they save their game, kill everybody in the village, and then uh, load their game back up again. It's, you know, just that same basic impulse. Um, so it's fun to mess with the NPCs or to elaborate aw awkward ways to kill them. This is the only bomb in the game, so... And that's two more deaths. It's normally sensible to just dive straight into the water, but we're Murder Corvo, and Murder Corvo likes to murder people for no reason. The gun and the crossbow are actually interestingly different. They um, kind of do completely different things. The gun does a ton of damage, but it's very loud and not very accurate, whereas the crossbow is a lot more accurate, does a lot less damage, and is silent. So the crossbow is actually more useful in combat if you don't want to draw attention from another group somewhere else. This is one of our first high chaos differences. I guess if you kill the Empress, you don't care about a few guards. As you can hear, these guys say some different things. Instead of talking about what an amazing swordsman and how sneaky you are, they talk about how murderously killy you are. Because we are already on high chaos. Although I think that it doesn't designate us as high chaos yet. You have to kill a lot of people to switch into high chaos. So I suspect that um, essentially what happens is there's just a tag. If you kill a certain number of people in the opening, then uh, it provokes different dialogue here. So in a moment I'll fast forward ahead until the next actually relevant bit, but before then I just want to show off a speedrunner's trick, which is a very simple and obvious trick, but basically if you throw a bottle you can knock that guy down, which is a lot faster than picking him up and throwing him aside. Um, ordinary Corvo of course respects the dead as a, as a good, kind and gentle man, so he would never do such a thing, but uh, we're playing asshole Corvo today. And Corvo disarms the traps. Asshole Corvo leaves the trip wires just in case someone will trip over it. He'd leave the ordinary traps too, but he wants to steal the bolts in them. Oh cool, killing to tools that I can actually use intentionally to kill people rather than doing so when I've fucked up. I hear the sound of overconfident victims. Knock something over if you can. Bastard. So my goal there was to kill him before he could yell for help, which is why I threw a bottle at him, because uh, 
Well, if you bottle him, he uh, bounces and falls over, or he gets distracted by the noise or whatever. He doesn't walk around the corner where he'll be in sight of these guys. Now, my ideal with one of these guys is to choke them out and have them flop bonelessly into the water, immediately drowning. But, uh... Aha! Will this work? So, so close. So close. Maybe I'll throw a bottle at him later. So, I thought there was another guy around here, but apparently there isn't. I'm not sure if there's variable spawns and different numbers of them, depending on different things. Or uh, if there's some other aspect that I don't know about. I think that... Because I definitely killed both of those guys and then fought three guys here when I played through this the last time. Um... Hmm, it's a mystery. Now that's just cheating. There we go, problem solved. And the disappearance of Lady Emma, Disrespect your surroundings. Marlo, over here. Quickly, I'm not talking to you. I don't have time for the little people. I'm an extremely important representative of Her Majesty's government in exile, namely the Executioner. Okay, actually, what did you want? I'm Samuel, and I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. Well, they said you'd come out here, but I can still hardly believe it. I'll take you to meet them, just down the river from here. Nine hundred and thirty-eight out of one thousand and ten. I think that's the closest I've ever gotten to getting all of the gold, and yet I'm still nearly a hundred coins away. Where did I miss them? Oh, look! See, sixteen hostiles killed. So it doesn't definitely. I've seen that be seventeen. So it definitely spawns in a guy sometimes. I wonder what the difference is for that. Maybe if it's someone cries, for someone if it's someone cries for help. Anyway, as you can see, we are already at high chaos, which is what we want to maintain throughout the entire game. Which shouldn't be difficult at this point. Um... <laughs> well, time to uh, make this place my own home. Like, just absolutely make myself at home. Because you know what I love to do whenever I uh, arrive at a new location? I like to go talk to the people in charge and then steal everything that's not nailed down. We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. I the do not care. Yes. Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him and then get some sleep. Out of my way. We'll out of my way, peasants. I should, uh, I should hasten to point out that, like... My opinions while playing as uh, your weapons and gear. while playing as asshole Corvo do not reflect my actual opinions in any way. Uh, hey, why don't you just keep it down here? Why do you have to go upstairs to get it every time? Idiot. It doesn't take uh, doesn't take much of a genius to know that High Chaos Corvo is going to throw things at your head. I forgot to show this off in the main uh, Let's Play, but if you use these machines, you can actually uh, make them work. Which has almost no purpose, because um, very few places in the game can you actually make these Perfect. barrels where they matter. Plug it in. Perfect. Thank you. Don't care. Tell me what I can make for you. How about you make me some good murder, murder tools for murdering with? Uh, I'm going to skip all of the resources for now. What I am going to do is buy all the crossbow upgrades, because the crossbow is a really good secondary weapon in combat, and I don't have enough money. I'll buy some more tomorrow. 
You must be exhausted. I advise that you get some sleep. Your life will get even more difficult soon. You should rest while you can. Uh, no thanks. I think I'll take Very a quick well. look around. You know best. Let me know if you need anything more. Hey, is there like a cloakroom or a lockbox or anything where everybody keeps the valuables, you know? Um, so that I can secure it and make sure it's safe. No? Okay. Chaos is a fun opportunity to just be a house cat. Oh boy, a full day of theft sure does leave me tired. Time to sleep the dreamless sleep of the completely unconcerned with morality. Oh, what? I was hoping for the deep sleep of the completely blameless. This is clearly a dream. Come on. Hello, I Corvo. don't care. I respect neither man nor god. How oh, I'm keeping that. You can't have, have it. Given you for Campbell is holding Don't care, you're not the boss of me. I do all the work around here anyway. One of us. And if you manage to find... Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I know what you want. Let's just leave it at we'll see, okay? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. What can I do for you? Piero, my old pervert. Why don't you buy me some things? And then I just drop on his desk a huge scattered heap of everything that previously was in the building. Oh boy, I can't wait to go do some killing. So I'll see you uh, a chapter of the main Let's Play from now. I'll catch you later. Bye. When you want to set out, just give the word. Oh, all in good time. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.